بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم السلام عليكم ورحمة الله تعالى وبركاته الحمد لله الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على شرف الأنبياء والمرسلين وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين الحمد لله we are continuing our uh, training program on a free life coach training program which we are providing to the world free of charge go to our website islamicpsychology.net and you can sign in and just go through our videos study about 30 videos do some powerpoints and then do a practicum uh, whether it's in the malls or with your family or with your friends and then you get certified as a Post Islam Psychology Life Coach which you can use to help the malls the Muslim community NGO and also to help your family lead a good life in Islam inshallah alright so we have given you the four developmental modules of being a life coach that is our motivational module our coaching module our mentoring module and then our counseling module eh? so now we are talking about our mentoring module and we have given you the Islamic trust model eh? that is T-R-U-S-T for mentoring trust is the first key then rapport then unique then synchronicity and time bond now we are talking about you the uniqueness of uh, this Islamic mentoring system. Alright, so we have explained to you how the, the where Allah inspire our great uh, Khalifa al-Rashidun and all the other Khalifa Rashidun, especially Ali Imam Ali, about how we can to lead life and how we can to bring up our children to become excellent achievers in this world and the hereafter. I've given you a lot of detail on that. And then uh, I have even given to you this understanding of modern psychology from mindset, Dr. Dan Siegel, where he developed this model called essence. Eh? As we transit from childhood to teenager, that means from the age of 12 to 24, we go through a process of neural uh, pruning and melination. Eh? So I've give, explained to you what is the meaning of pruning and melination. And as a result of those transformation from childhood to adulthood to become independent human being, you go through emotional spark. That's where you have a lot of rage, a lot of anger, a lot of uh, just uh, uh, not wanting to be close to your parent. And then you develop social engagement with your peers because you must have a group of friends because uh, then you, you feel secure. And then you like to do things that are new, novelty, you're expressing your, your, your newness in terms of achieving something in life. And then you explore creatively. All these can be both negative and positive. For example, if you have this emotional spark of anger, then you can develop to become an extremist. And this is where it's happening in the Muslim world now. We have a lot of extremists who blow themselves up. And how and why this happened? in this 21st century within the Ummah is something that we have to explore and something that we have to correct. We cannot allow this kind of uh, evil to take place because during adolescence, this emotional spark can be turned into something very negative and this can cause a lot of harm to the Ummah, to humanity and to society as a whole. That's why you have organizations like IS, Boko Haram, uh, Taliban and all that as using this emotional spark and uh, the negative social engagement and the novelty of being bombing yourself out of uh, and this kind of thing that they are directing it through brainwashing so what we need to do is we have to understand that this is a very dangerous period as we grow so how are we going to develop a unique islamic model of balance eh? so i'm giving to you this idea of how we can harness positive islamic psychology that we have the whole book inshallah in a few months time you can download the English version now you can download the Bahasa Indonesian version now, this whole 600 page book uh, sudah ada dalam Bahasa Indonesia anda boleh download dan boleh gunakannya so the English version insyaAllah will be also open to for download and you can use your laptop or your uh, handphone to just study our book huh? as you study and then you can understand the beauty of positive Islamic psychology and how you can help harness this idea of uh, psychology, positive Islamic psychology to change the Ummah. So I explained to you that in developing this uniqueness model in terms of adolescence is the most critical period of harnessing our young people, either they become positive or negative. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has ordained upon us to be an Ummah to wasata. Eh? So Allah tell us وَكَذَلِكَ جَعَلْنَاكَ أُمَّةٌ وَسَتَى لِتَكُونُ شُهَدَى عَلَى النَّاسِ That we have made you a just balanced community that you'll be a witness over humanity. So we are created by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to witness over all humanity. Alright? So we are a just balanced 
ummah what does this just balance ummah entail and how we going to develop a framework huh? so this is there's a lot of work to be done inshallah if some of you here are doing your phd or your master's program you can take this as uh, your your thesis all right so what i'm trying to propose is that you integrate this is essence is from dan siegel that is the the, the model that i've explained to you in terms of how understanding the emotional spark understanding the social engagement understanding the novelty and the creative exploration of young adolescents you can then direct them towards the middle path all right so we use islamic psychology model and this is the islamic psychology model and this is the essence so how are we going to create the middle path because if right now you see the situation of the ummah we find that we have three patterns eh, which i'm going to give you the first pattern is liberal secular values and nominal islam that means the whole world especially the western world is moving into atheistic secular values there's no such thing as god you know it just everything is just material world you live you die that's the end all right so because of the very strong secular materialistic tendencies within the 21st century humanity most of us have lost our traditional spiritual values and our community values so our social values is now driven by greed uh, consumption all right uh, free sex addiction all the whole range of addiction is getting crazy uh, and artificiality you know artificial everything is artificial you see the glittering of the light plastic light you see uh, packaging plastic packaging everything and we are destroying then the nature of our transcendent human self that is being lost so when you just direct yourself towards these secular atheistic values you just go for pleasure and just passion and just fulfillment of your nafs your lower animalistic desire so this is the the, the model that the modern world is this uh, industrial revolution in the 21st and 21st 21st century is bringing us but where does it go it is bringing severe destruction in terms of social sociological destruction ecological destruction and the destruction of humanity in not more than 50 or 100 years if we continue this trend of just that value system so on the tail code of this kind of values we have a lot of muslims who are nominal islam islam in name only his name could be uh, abdul rahman he could be uh, uh, safiya or aliya whatever it is but they do not you know oh well we just it's just name only yeah so but, but they are basically secular materialistic in terms of the value system because imbued by infused by the value system of this dunya as you know today so we have to bring them to the center all right then we have the other extreme this is the rigid rigid exterior islam uh, they have form base everything is just whether you have a beard or not whether you put your hand here or here or here uh, whether you can play football with shorts or not all right these are form based you know and whether you can show your one hair or not whether you put on the, the scarf or not whether you put the hijab or not and all this is just talking about form but no depth and this is where because of the last 60 years of uh, very rigid kind of islam uh, in terms of wahhabism you have this problem now in terms of salafism and then you have the new salafism now they are split up into the highly takfir type eh, of values that means you have these people who are calling all human beings all muslims other than them as kafir and your blood is halal for them to kill that's why you have group like is so the legacy of islam of the 21st century should not be is they are the killers they are the distorted destructive mm, version of assassins not islam this is terrible what are the legacies of islam the legacy of islam we have the taj mahal legacy of love we have the alhambra uh, in spain we have so many beautiful legacies that we have left behind we have islamic art islamic calligraphy we have uh, a coherent holistic integrated society of the middle path so it is important for us especially when at adolescence we should not allow this rigid exterior islam to take hold because you see some of these young people with their beard with their serban looking like they are going to die tomorrow it's so stunned so strict so sad 
That is not Islam. They're not even smiling when Rasulullah says he sent us a rahmatul alamin, a rahmah for the universe, rahmah for the human beings, rahmah for the animals, rahmah for the universe. Smiling all the time. But we have this extreme Islam now that is being propagated, and this is very dangerous, and it is going to explode. So we have ex this is already exploded in Syria, in Iraq, in uh, Egypt, in many countries of the Muslim world. And this brand, so-called, of Salafism is now fighting among themselves. They have those very socially, very active. They have the passive and they have the takfiri group. All right? But this is not a rahmah for the ummah or for Islam. But this is a deviation that we have to help them, bring them to the center. So what is this center? This center is, I've mentioned to you in the, in the, in the verse earlier on, that... وَكَذَلِكَ أُمَّةٌ وَسَتَ لِتَكُونَ شُهَدَىٰ عَلَى النَّاسِ And we have made you a just balanced community that will be a witness over humanity. So this just balanced community is the middle path. Al-Ummatu Wasata. And this Al-Ummatu Wasata is the traditional Islam that you see within the four schools. The Hanafi, the, uh, the Maliki, the Shafi'i, the Hanbali. These are the majority of Muslims. So this is the path of safety. So we must bring together, whether you want to be a fully Shafi'i, for example, like in, the, in, in Malaysia, Indonesia, we are all Shafi'is. But we take ulama, alim, whether they're from Maliki school or Hanafi school, come and visit our mosques, give lectures, pray together. So we are united. But we do not go around saying, oh, you are a kafir because you have a short beard or because, uh, you know, you use a short pants or what. And this, this is the form-based Islam, rigid exterior, is going to destroy not only the Ummah, but this very same family. So now you have a lot of backlash, especially those who are brought up in a very extreme Islamic schools in the West. Now they are disowning Islam. And this is happening in very large numbers. If you look at the uh, Facebook account and so on and what they write, it is sad. They have lost a whole sense of being a Muslim because once they reach adolescence, they disown their parents. When they disown their parents, they become liberal, atheistic, secular, nominal, if it's just to satisfy their parents, they become nominal Muslim. So from here, they jump right here. But we got to bring them back to the center. So the center is positive values, serving the Ummah, and most important is spiritual Islam. Why are we on this earth? We are here to serve Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We are here to be his Khalifa on this earth. We are here to serve uh, humanity, we are here to make the world good, we are here, so many positive values the legacies of Islam, that is what that our forefathers has left behind not suicide bombing not political Islam, not those evil doers who, who kill anybody and everybody but we have to work together, and the most dangerous phase, as I mentioned to you, is the adolescence so we advise all our brothers and sisters who are in this kind of group, and those people in this group, bring them to the centre and this is the path if we can bring then we can we are able to harness their emotional spark direct it positively their social engagement that we have groups within themselves that they can bring towards a better islam then they can exp experience novelty new experience within the uh, within the middle path and the creative exploration within islam so when we do this we create a very strong Adolescents, right? that means our teenagers and our young people will then become those who carry this banner of Islam positively so that the whole humanity feels safe with Muslims. Now, humanity is feeling unsafe with Muslims because we have groups of people who are influenced by extremist ideology, calling themselves Muslims, destroying the very name of Islam. So, it is important that when we develop this whole idea of positive middle path, we must bring us the idea of, all right, the Ummatu Wasata, the positive value system is in terms of our life. As our Holy Prophet Muhammad Wasallam has sent as a Rahmatul Alamin, we fulfill that value system and the character, and then we develop spiritual Islam based on our total submission to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, feeling the closeness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, feeling the mercy and the grace of Allah feeling the Ar-Rahman, Ar-Rahim, the mercy and compassion of Allah, feeling the Ghafurul Wadu, the forgiveness and the love of Allah, feeling the internal meaning and purpose in life, the joy of 
living in a wonderful world, having wonderful families, having wonderful communities, having wonderful Iman, Islam and Ihsan, and knowing that we are the servant of Allah, His Khalifa on this earth, always striving to make ourselves good, helping others to be good, to making the world good, inshaAllah.